How you doing? Is everybody okay? It is good to be here. Today is um, the Sabbath, and I remember in the in the good book it says, "I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord." So this morning, as we are gathered in this place, if uh, you're a visitor or somebody who's come to be with a, a family member or a first-time visitor in the in the pew pocket, there is a, a guest information card. Uh, take a few moments this morning and, and uh, fill that out and put that in the offering plate as the ushers come by. And 
that helps us to know who you are, but it's also a way of, for us to connect with you and let you know who we are. So um, if you're visiting with us, do put um, some time uh, filling out one of those guest information cards. Um, this morning, I want to invite uh, Tim Ringer to come and speak uh, on behalf of the Wednesday night meal and program that is coming up, but also some other things, too, uh, that are on the horizon for the life of the church. Tim, would you come? Good morning, St. Luke. Good to see everybody today. Pastor, thank you for opportunity to stand up here and speak a few words. Um, last Sunday, we were blessed to hear Heather speak about our upcoming rejuvenation of Wednesday nights. Um, this is something that has been in the works for a number of months now, and we're approaching kickoff, as you would, very soon, so we are, we're excited. Uh, just want to share a few things coming up. This next Saturday, August the 13th, from 9 to 11, uh, we will be having uh, teacher training. Last weekend, last Sunday, volunteers signed up and it was just, it was great to see the outpouring of interest and volunteerism. So thank you so much for that. So those that are wanting to assist with the, uh, the classes, the teaching of our children, uh, this Saturday from 9 to 11, we'll have training here at the church. So we're excited about that. And then the following Wednesday, August the 17th, um, that evening, we will be having a parent preview. I'm not sure how to exactly title it, but it will be an opportunity for parents to come and we will be sharing with you the curriculum and some of our hopes and dreams that we'll be uh, working through with this uh, new process. Um, we're very excited about it. We'll be following the Gospel Project, um, a, a curriculum that's put out by Lifeway. We're excited about that and how it's going to be taught on every level from three years old to 90 years old. And everyone will have a related message every week, so we are excited about that. Lastly, I just ask for you to continue to pray for us. Pray for um, all the people that are working in this, for all the volunteers, for the opportunity for us all to come together in a Wednesday night Midweek renewal, refresh, time of fellowship. So again, thank you for the time this morning, and we look forward to seeing everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Tim. You know that um, we're in the home stretch. You know we're just uh, today marks uh, one month uh, before the kickoff of the Wednesday night program. Seventh uh, of September is going to be here in in no time. So as Tim said, please continue to be prayerful for. Um, uh, the leaders of the, of the, of the group, uh, of all of the, the children's groups, the youth group, and the adults, but also for those who are preparing the meal and uh, the time of fellowship together. So um, mark it on your calendar on Wednesday evenings to be here and share a meal with us. If you would, um, if you would take your bulletin there in the uh, call to worship, I'll read the light print. If you'll together read the dark print, let's stand together as... We share these words, these opening words together. The heavens declare the righteousness of God. The earth declares God's beauty. From the rising of the sun to its setting, God's word shines forth in glory. And if you'll take a, a hymnal and turn to hymn number 529, How Firm a Foundation. That's our processional hymn, our opening hymn this morning.
Let's bow together as we pray. Gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you who know us more intimately than we know ourselves, and it's only by your grace that we're able to come to this place. We ask for your, your presence among us today in this time of worship and give us the strength for the journey ahead. Lift us up from the mire and put us on a solid rock. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you would, as we are standing together, the question that comes to us often is, what is it that you believe, O Christian? So using the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us affirm once again our corporate faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory. You may now be seated as children come forward for their time. Okay, so I want to um, show you a bag that Alan Ruddick and Miss Judy Blakesley made for me. It's, uh, it's called Kid Stuff. So in this bag, they're, it's gonna, what we're going to talk about this morning. And so on the back of it, they also wrote, Poof be gone. Remember that? How many times have I said that? Poof be gone. Alan, would you stand? I want to thank you. And Judy, if you're, if, wherever you are, if you'll just uh, know how kind you are uh, to think about the, the children of this church and how much you love them and how you know the, how, is, how important it is for their time. That's right. But thank you. We will give Alan a... a Okay, now, so this morning and this bag, this new bag, I have something that I believe that you know kind of sort of what it is. It is. What is it? What do you use it for? You know, how, what, you, what? Measuring. measuring stuff. What kind of stuff do you think you can measure with a measuring tape? Like counters and stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff can measure the length of something, the height of something, the width of something, and all be, you know, it says it marked off by inches and then by feet. And I like that. You wanna hold that? You pass that around, don't, cut, don't hurt yourself with it. Don't poke anybody in the eye with it. That is a big one, it's 30 feet. There's, uh, if I pull it all the way out, I don't know. How, well, you want to show how? Yeah, let's see how long it is. Let's take a look at that. Let's, let's do this. Hang Let me see it for you. You're going to poke yourself in the eye. Careful. So let's do this. So what's, how about that? 
you know? You know, what do you suppose? How, how far is 30 feet? How far is 30 feet? Do you know? Let's see. We're just going to humor me, folks. This is for a reason. So 30 feet. Can you imagine how? There's 20. There's 20. So we're still, we're still not there yet. We're still not there yet. I'm going to scoot. Let's see. It'll, it'll flip over. Yeah, thanks, Russ. Appreciate the assist. So, so almost, ooh, look at that. That's 25. Look at that. Look how, did you know that that was that far away? Look at that. Look at that. Is it long? What? 30 feet. 30 feet. This is the cool part about it. Is that right? No, don't hurt yourself. Thank you. That won't hurt myself. 30 feet. We can measure things with this, but how, how big is God? Bigger than 30 feet. Bigger, higher than 30 feet. But closer than we know it. God is, is everywhere, always here, too. Right there in your heart. Right, so you, you can measure that with love, right? You can do, you know this. You can measure it with your love for other people, right? Is that cool? Yeah, having fun today. I am too. So let's bow together as we pray. God, we're grateful that you're so big, but you're also so present and so close. We ask that in these moments, you'll continue to uh, live within the hearts of these young people. Be in their lives always, and may your love surround them. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me show you the back of the, let me show you the back of the, what does that say? All right, so do it. join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Psalm reading today is Psalm 50 verses 1 through 8 and 22 and 23. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a, is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with him by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. Mark this then, you who forget God, or I will tear you apart, and there will be no one to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. The second reading today is Hebrews chapter 11, 
verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faithful is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds we are prepared, the worlds we are prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from, from, from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised. As a foreigner, as, a, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him for the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power and procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren. Because he considered him faithful, who had promised, therefore from one person, and as and this one as God as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand at, by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who seek who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a home, a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it, as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Thank you, Garrett. That um, reading from the psalm, you know, we serve a God who is and who is not silent. So this morning, as, as we are uh, reading from the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter, let's stand together for the reading of this Gospel. Beginning with verse 32 of chapter 12. Jesus said, do not let... Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those whom the father finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them, so blessed are they. But know this, if the owner of the house had not known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. You know, one of the characteristics of our human condition is um, fear. Um, you remember that in the book of Genesis where Adam says, we heard the sound of you in the cool of the day and we were naked and we hid ourselves. We were afraid of what might happen. Fear. 
You know, the disciples were in the boat, and Jesus was in the stern on a pillow asleep, and there was a wind and waves, and they were afraid, and Jesus said, peace be still. Fear is a part of our human condition. Anthony DeMello says we're not afraid of the unknown because it's hard to be afraid of something you don't know. He says we're more afraid of letting go of the known. Fear is a part of who we are, but there's in, in the Gospels and all throughout the Council of Scripture, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Fear not, for I am with you always. Fear not. And why Jesus is talking to his disciples and to us and continually saying, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be anxious for anything. And in this gospel passage, Jesus says, it is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. That's pretty simple, isn't it? How about it, you know, when you say, well, I just won't be afraid. How does that work? Often it's just one of those wishful thinkings, isn't it? Whistling in the dark. I won't be afraid. There's so much to be afraid of these days, isn't it? You turn on the news and there's a lot of fear. Well, it's for, you know, you've got the global warming. You've got the... You've got the economy, you've, you've got all the other things too. You've got wars in diverse places and it, there's so much to be afraid of. The unknown, there's no shortage of that. But when Jesus says, fear not, we have to take that to our counsel. We have to take that to heart. You know, when Jesus says, don't be afraid, Jesus knows how much we are afraid of everything as human beings. So Jesus continues to tell his disciples and to us through the counsel of Scripture, don't be afraid. Fear not. I'm afraid of black water. Went to Cypress Gardens, you know how it is, that tannin in the, in the water. Oh, oh. If I can't see the bottom. Susan and I were in a, in a, in a canoe in Cypress Gardens. And, you know, there's some places where it kind of like that, that muck collects and little tiny alligators, you could, see the, you could see the trails of them through that stuff. And I just, I could see it. I could see it. It clears the day. Somebody's going to stand up in that canoe, and it ain't going to be me. And there we're going to go. We're going to tip over, and I'm going to go into that black water. And I don't know what's at the bottom of that. That's one of those fears, you know. And it's, it's not real because I've never, been, I've never fallen out of a canoe in Cypress Gardens. But it's just one of those things. I don't know what's at the bottom of it. So what are you afraid of this morning? And if you do the whole assessment of what you're afraid of, if you're, if you're afraid of a relationship that's not going to change, you're afraid of, of what's going to happen tomorrow, if you have a deadline due, or you're going to go to work tomorrow and you're going to find some, or you're going to have a diagnosis that you don't know, you have no control of that, or you have a child that's ill, or a child that's wayward, or a child that runs away. And what are you afraid of? A long list of things that Jesus knows when he says, fear not, it's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is my Father's good pleasure to give you access to love without limits. It is my Father's good pleasure. It's my, it's my Father's pride and joy to give to you without limit everything that is rightfully yours as a child of God created in the image of an almighty God. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you everything Love unending, grace abounding, forgiveness 
us the forgiveness for us, you know, because we know who we are, but God doesn't measure forgiveness. God's forgiveness is not just 30 feet long. God's forgiveness is unlimited. Maybe somebody's not told you how much they love you lately. I invite you, you who have access to the kingdom of God and love unending and forgiveness without measure, grace abounding. Maybe there's somebody today that you haven't called, you haven't talked to, or you haven't told just how much you love them. Be ready. Jesus continues, be ready, be dressed, be ready, wake up, it's time. You know, I had a seminary professor one time that says, I do know this, that, you know, we're closer to the, uh, the second coming of Christ than we were yesterday. Now, I, claim, I don't claim to know that, and Jesus said that nobody knows, not even the Son, only the Father knows that. But what if, in the twinkling of an eye, in these very moments when we're in this place of worship, that Christ descends in glory and takes his church to himself. Imagine that, to be ready, not to be dozing off, not to be waiting for another time, but to be ready, Jesus said, that, it, that even when the, those who are in the household that are waiting for the bridegroom to come, so whenever he knocks, that they'll open the door and he can come in and that will, they will be ready. Having your lamps lit on the front of the bulletin is an image of an, an ancient lamp. A dear friend of mine gave me one just like that. I never lit it. I don't have that. I don't know how to, you know, I don't know whatever to do with it. It's a little bit of oil like these, these candles there, but that's a, and a wick that, and it sits there and it's not lit. But to be ready to have your lamps lit, to have them trimmed, to be ready when the bridegroom comes, when Christ comes in glory, to be ready. Oh, that day. It is a day not with judgment, but a day, a day of, of salvation, a day of wholeness, a day of bringing everything into fullness. May God continue to work within us. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. I'm excited that the, during this time of offering and anthem, um, I would rebrand them as the ladies' choir. You women, I know you women, but it's the ladies', ladies choir. But as the ushers come forward to, um, to receive the offering, and also if you're a visitor, to put that card in there, if you will. But the ladies are going to sing for the beauty of the earth.
You know, as we share this meal together, I pray that in our partaking, that we, our hearts may be strangely warmed. And the, uh, in your hymnal on page 12 is the invitation to the table. Let's turn together in um, our hymnal on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love and the passing of the peace. 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 You all did. Church, in, the, uh, in your bulletin are the words that we'll share, and there are times when I will add other words in there, but the, uh, the light print I'll read, and if you'll together read the dark print. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You showed your people that if we were willing and obedient, their transgressions would not be held against them. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. He taught that your kingdom might come at any moment like a thief in the night. So we must be alert at all times. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to t sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave, um, gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on us as we gather together. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, with the confidence of the children of God, let us together pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For the bread which we share is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Now you may be seated as those who are prepared to serve come forward. Friends, as you come, a bit of bread will be given to you if you'll take that, dip that lightly in the cup. 
Also, if uh, there, we have gluten-free wafers and also the individual, um, individual elements. And just as you come forward, just indicate which you prefer. But it come now as we receive the body and blood of Christ.
Have all who desire to partake done so at this time? Let's stand together. As we as we pray, eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world on the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now our... Um, Closing hymn or dedication is hymn number 710, Faith of Our Father. 710, if you'll take a hymnal and turn to that, that hymn, 710. Blessings of the priests as you go forth and into service as God's holy nation, God's priesthood of believers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.